Oh, hello. Hey, Jim. How are you? Hi, Jim. How hey. are you? Welcome back, Jim. Welcome back. Mm. Thank you, thank you. <coughs> if you need a drink or anything, just look, push oh, this aside. Or... I brought some water. Okay, very good. So, tea? Okay, thank you. <laughs> hello. Oh. Uh, come on. All right. Oh, what do you do next? I don't know. Is there any anybody that really needs to talk to anyone next? How is everybody? What's new? Okay. Do you have any questions? No, I'm good. Okay, good. Are you? Are you? No. <laughs> good. No, I I actually was watching the um the. Cusco, Peru, the drawings and all of that, and I became very curious, you know, I was... Um, yeah, um, what did they say they were? Um, the holes, I guess they were a form of communications, there were some crystals there, um, because they, um, the, the speculation was that, that it was a form of communication, so I got curious, I was like, oh, I can ask to Kerr. <laughs> Oh, that they speculated that it was a form of communication? Yeah. Oh. So. I never heard of them before. <laughs> I just want to ask, do you recall which uh, a lot of Some of them. Yes. I hear bits and pieces. They want me to hear some more. I, sometimes they use my words and they'll totally hone in and there's a word I'm looking for, and I'll say it's my mind to find it. So, um, so have... You're getting feedback from somebody. Can you please mute yourself? Somebody's playing the video. It was Kim. Oh, hi, Kim. Yeah, it was so fun it, last yeah. time. Douglas came to me. So, came any in, like, questions? Oh, go ahead, Gabriel. Sorry. Last time Douglas came in, he went like, "Oh, it's hello, it's James." Oh no, it's not James. It's Douglas. I was just speaking to James. <laughs> <laughs> it's like telepathically, you forget who you are. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, o the only the only other. You need ahead, to be Jim. muted, Kim, if you don't speak. Okay. Questions. <laughs> Jim, Barbara here. Hi, Barbara. Hi. My question is for Barbara Glenn. Okay. She's seen a lot of people and a lot of aliens on her property and in her house. Is she seeing fourth dimensional beings? Okay. Um, I'll have to ask one of the uh, aliens that because I have no idea. I should have asked when Takara was on. Yeah, so, sorry about that. I have no idea. <laughs> I can't connect to that. So, but uh, yes, I would imagine. Uh, well, I want to ask that question if somebody else comes through. Sure, you can ask anyone. They would probably know better than the I. Would. The simple answer that's help. coming to me is yes. The simple, like simple answer to start from is yes. Yeah, I believe that most of the uh, aliens have reached fourth dimensional and do use fourth dimensional uh, transportations and things of that nature. So just on a logical sort of understanding, I would probably say if there's a lot of aliens, definitely some of them have to be fourth dimensional. Some yeah. of them definitely do. Carr did say at one time she's like in between third and fourth dimension. Who was? My friend Barbara Glenn. Okay. Yes. You know Barbara. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I know Barbara. Yes, and yes, it is possible to be between fourth, third, and fourth dimension, and yeah. that's what uh, I think they talked about that even earlier today. Uh, some people moving from the third dimension to the fourth dimension. That's very well. Yes. Um, the other question that I had, and I, I'm not, I'm a little confused about now, is about the higher self. Yes. Um, and it's the higher self, um, like, like I don't know, I thought that the higher self was energy that never incarnated. 
Actually, you have a higher self that is actually someone that's in spirit that's been around for a long, long time and knows a lot of things, and they're just... They're sort of who the spirit guides go to to ask questions sometimes, but they also have an effect on on some of your decisions as well. They're there for a reason. They're there for your higher uh, vibrations and your higher resonations because that's uh, if you let me give you an example. If you're a musician, chances are your higher self is probably a musician as well. If you're an artist chances are your higher self has some workings in the artistic field. If your highest uh, resonation is um, science, perhaps there's some that person is probably a little scientific in some ways uh, because they have to know about the human that they're taking care of. And they, uh, it's a very interesting process. I don't know how they select them, but it, it, it really also is. The highest so the yeah. Yeah. so the higher self, I thought it was part part of you that just remained uh, non incarnate. It's non incarnate, and yes, in some ways that you are correct because what I was saying is whatever the, your highest resonation is, so that is of the highest self of as okay. well. Okay, so, so then so they it is. They have incarnated in you in some ways because of your resonation. Do you understand? So oh. part of that is true. The other part is that they are someone that is a guide as well because they have to be to answer questions of the, uh, the spirit guides because with that particular vocation, that they are they are incarnate with you, they still have uh, the spirit guides that have mind, body, spirit, soul, and all that stuff. So they all pull through and work together. Okay, so so the would the breakdown then be the oversoul, then then the higher self, and yeah, then soul, and then you? Yes, oversoul is a collective. Right. An oversoul is a collective of souls that is very high, and you all become, as you pass out of this life, you become part of the oversoul, and it can, and you can be part of it, or you can move away from it, but in most cases, it's a very big collective, and you can choose to stay with it or move away from it as you choose to learn different things in the spiritual world. Um, Jim... There are multiple um, may, may, sorry, Max. Uh, I don't um, may I? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I may I just elaborate a little bit? Um, just to bring sure. this question. I, I think it's a very good question. Um, I, I think uh, sometimes it's just the names. Um, you know, we have collective consciousness. We have oversoul. Um, I think people are looking in different directions. Um, and they're just under a different banner, a different name. But I think the purpose is the same. So I think that can be confusing sometimes. Oh, yeah, and I understand what you're saying. A lot, of describe yeah. it, a lot of people describe it differently, um, but it's the same thing. Mm. This is the way it was brought by the aliens, because I learned it a while back, and because uh, I asked them several times about it. And this is how they described it to me. So that's just one way of describing it. It can be described in many other ways. It can be used in many other terms. But the, uh, but yes, that. Thank you for that because there there is confusion. They should make it all just one under one banner of understanding. Yeah. One yes. Of, but people describe things differently. Aliens describe things differently as well. The way they mm -hmm. speak might be slightly different or. You know, um, it's very similar but very different at times. So, um, Bashar defined it uh, in an interesting way, uh, higher self. So uh, he said you have multiple incarnations and you go, um, which exist simultaneously, but you have an experience of them being in certain sequence. So you draw more from the past incarnations and 
much less from the future incarnations. And at some point, you become this uh, being which is you know, the incarnation which is most expansive, most developed. And after that, you stopped incarnating altogether. You move move on to the uh, all uh, next level altogether. So that being before moving to the next level altogether, all before leaving this um, overall reality to some next level, is most knowledgeable about all past lives. It has for, for that being all lives are past lives for him, or for it, and and that's where that being is serves as a higher self to the past lives. So it kind of has all the perspective, all the benefits, it learned all, everything. So from that perspective, it's still you, but and you, it knows all your lives. And from that perspective, it kind of guides you through your incarnation. And, and then we discussed, I discussed much in the books, how does it guide? But you know, it is a daily interaction. This higher self daily interacts with us. Not all the time. It's its focus of attention is not all the day through, but and when I spoke to my higher self, it was a couple hours per day. Uh, there is a upload, download, and interaction, very active interaction. And my higher self much uh, uh, enforced the idea that meditations are really nice, much like the ideas of meditations. That's where uh, the communication is beneficial for me. It's also beneficial, as I understand, for, for him. Then uh, the oversouls are of different levels. It's like a big tree with branches, and it branches and branches. So there is some oversoul here, but then the whole global oversoul, and there is all human oversoul, all humans around the galaxy, and, and so on. So there are multiple oversouls of different levels. That's what I wanted to comment. But again, the language we have is limited, because there is a complexity which some of this we can understand, and some of this we just cannot. It's just beyond that reality. Right. The the levels of oversouls are you can stick with the original oversoul or you can move into different areas uh, with different oversouls. Yes, that's true. Because there's different things being taught and, and received in the different levels. So if you're learning many, many things and you're uh, planning things and doing and so where you end up in the oversouls levels is up to you in many ways. So there are soul groups, and uh, possibly many of us are from the same soul group. That would be interesting to find. Yeah, out. who knows? <laughs> uh, somebody would comment on it. That does anybody know? <laughs> does anybody know if we're from the same soul group? Uh, um, maybe the Temptations or the Diana Ross and the Supremes. <laughs> Groups from the past. Yeah. you are connected to Anubis. Anubis, yes. Oh, that would be nice to invite Anubis to to, to channel as well. Oh, hello. Hey, Jim, welcome back. Thank you. Francine, how are you? I'm doing well. Welcome back. Uh, no, no, not at this time. I was it was made clear to me I'm here as an observer and okay. Oh, okay. participant on that part. So nice. Wow. It's, nice it's nice to have two people. Nice introduction. Thanks. Um, nice to have two people around Jim, so he has uh, more balance in the yeah, grounded. Yeah. Kind of his, uh, and and of energy. Thank you. I feel feel like I've seen her before. Some place somehow. Oh, in a dream. interesting. Why? He's in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been there yet. <laughs> it's on the list. Oh, very good. Well, I don't have. If you have any questions for me, go ahead. Uh, or, or for Francine, right? Yes. <laughs> or for Max. So that was a question from Gabriel. Uh, what is grounding? And Buddha sort of didn't didn't want to stay longer, but well, you can answer. Francine, can you answer what is grounding? Uh, from that first entity that came through, he had made it clear uh, how she, that yes. Yeah, that was a female. It was a female. A lure female. 
Takura speaks. It's, she's a Lyran female. She's uh, eight foot, seven foot tall, and she's big. And she has a lowest voice that I channel. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, she made it clear how important grounding was, and it was interesting when Buddha then addressed it. How we were ping pong. He made that analogy, that that metaphor of a ping pong bouncing all over. I, I think it was Buddha that had said that. Uh -huh. um, and the grounding does serve the purpose so that you can be more aligned uh, for the energy and to take it in and uh, absorb it and get it out as well. So I was making sure that to aid Jim that I am myself first, of course, uh, that I was grounded to uh, Mother Earth so that I could give my energy to him and not have it be scattered to affect it all. It just helps the transmission more. What uh, tools do you use to ground? Do you use tools? I you use a lot of visual um, and my and my guides and it just seems like I it comes in quickly for me. So you use I know to do it first and foremost before I connect it all. With, with energy and I just feel it open right up so mm -hmm. I am a big nature lover someone had mentioned that as well uh -huh. telling one of the participants you are going out in nature I know that I know I'm drawn to nature I, I seem to feed off of it so it, yeah. it just strengthens that for me and it's very easy for me to ground myself so when you're in the nature how do you ground yourself um, it's not a ceremony by any means. I don't want to put that across. Uh -huh. um, I just feel that I resonate Connect. with the vibration. So you don't do anything special. Everything it's all very. It's all very visual. I always really take a moment at some spot and pause and. Uh -huh. uh, maybe say a, a blessing, but it's very quickly to connect my chakras, clear them out, absorb through right through my feet, run up and. I, it's very clear that you are grounded and move yes. up through the third dimension. I, don't, I go right up. I was surprised. Buddha said people stop here. I thought, really? How can they? Okay. But for me, it goes right up, and it seems mm -hmm. like there's more chakras than what people usually address. Well, yes. Above the... So it's energetic. You don't even use words. But visual, what do you visually... I, I, I can do a visual if I'd like. What is, but, it? What is it? What do you do? Um... I can go through the colors if I'd like, uh -huh. um, but more of it is an energy vibration. So I can, mm -hmm. they actually mingle from above and below. And exactly. sometimes I'll just ask whatever color that needs to come through for me and that purpose for the time and moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to serve me for the purpose of the day. I guess that would be the key, the key um, explanation. The energies come from below, and the energies come from above. And Francine doesn't even use words for that. It just comes naturally just by feeling the energy. So if you are only, your attention is only up, then you lose the grounding. So you have to Mixing, connect, yeah. grab some energies from above, grab, grab some energies from below, and you're in the middle to connect them. It's intention and acceptance. Yes. Mm -hmm. The heart chakra is right in the center between those two things. Everything comes there, so it's yes. many pardons. Just just to add in that, um, I've been noticing that pulling, allowing the flow of energy to come in from the left side of the body and the right side of the body to mix in with the up and down, and allowing it to swirl. And what I do is I just allow myself to sit, and whatever shapes, colors, explosions. When I feel an explosion, I tell myself the reverse. I'm I'm just coming back to one oneness, yeah. and I do whatever I I do whatever I feel intuitively to allow that happen in the most gentle but strongest allowances for myself. And now it's just a matter of like whatever I feel will keep my balance and perpetual balance, conscious perpetual balance, ever expanding. It really has assisted. Right. Here is an image for you. Uh, energies from above, energies from below, making the yin and yang vortex. And he's talking about bringing in from the side as well. So. <laughs> oh, all right. I, 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 
Yeah. Yeah, I feel like connection through all my chakras going from up to the ground and from ground up sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that is that grounding though. Um, I didn't hear what you said exactly. I feel then he comes from here. Yes. And it goes down here and goes from down there to up here and out. I'm yeah. feeling the message yeah. of what are you some of us are intuitively turning ourselves inside out. We're we're grounding we're pulling in the forty energies from from the earth and then that's just gradually building up in ourselves to in our in our in our, in our individual selves so as to give us the idea of you know how much of a three to four dimensional being is comfortable for us in the three D realm. Right. Um, so we can be, you know, a 4D being, but I'm working with the idea, okay, I'm in a 3D realm, but I'm an infinite being that's learning how to be just pure light, crystalline light, in a physical form that right. looks flesh. You have, remember, flesh. you have to remember, though, you were born into the third dimension, and I know you know that, and the third dimension has to be realized and accepted before you can do anything higher. So you have already realized your third dimension, understand the body, the earth and things, and now are pulling yourself out of that dimension. But you understand that whenever you get to the fourth dimension, there is information that has to come back to the third dimension. And to be able to do that, you have to ground, because otherwise we won't understand what you're talking about if, you're, if you don't ground when you're communicating. So. Uh, that's that's a big part of the message, and I can tell that you're very fourth dimensional and have much knowledge from a higher dimensions. So, but sometimes you go over our heads a little bit because you move off of the ground just enough that it goes right over our heads. So, my only thing with you is I know that you're very highly spiritual and very very highly connected. Just remember us on the earth here. <laughs> Uh, remember us. Remember to ground yourself a little bit more sometimes, so it doesn't the message doesn't go over the head. Because I, I know it does for me every now and then. So, but I, I, feel, I feel it's I feel it's getting I feel I'm getting closer. I feel, yeah. I feel like it's 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 right there. I feel like I have it in my grasp, but I don't need to put my hand on it anymore. Maybe just put my hands to. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. Um, and uh, because I want your message the higher message to come through the way that it should and sometimes it goes over our head a little bit so because you're so f the fourth dimension wasn't connecting to the third because that's the only way it will uh, help us to uh, understand do you know what I mean it, it the grounding makes yes, yes I'm, I'm, I'm getting your, I'm, yes. I'm getting your visual I'm getting your visual and I'm getting guidance as to like where, where you put your hand, they're they're guiding it down to my throat. Wonder. They want it to like be. They're saying what you're 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 exactly putting in the words what they're showing me. Pardon. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Thank um, you. Share my uh, my way of uh, grounding. It's more more like connecting higher energies and uh, physical environment. I basically I use hands a lot. It's very natural for me to use hands. So Reiki. Even before doing Reiki, I was using hands. I would. Feel the area around. If I ask a question, I would always I look. I would put, uh, do that gesture and try to receive the answer through the hand. And I would feel the ground just just like that. And I would move my fingers to kind of interact with with the energies around. So that is communicating with the trees, communicating with the you know. Area with energies within the room, communicating with the energies with people. I guess I spook a lot of people by doing that, but, <laughs> but I kind of am just looking at them, smiling, and continue doing, and you know, the, or or just pretend I didn't do that before, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that helps uh, helps you know connecting. These energies are not physical; they are not three D energies. They are not even measured by electronics devices. It is non physical energies closest to us. It's in the same space, but it is not electromagnetic. It is electromagnetic, maybe. It's etheric. It is etheric. It's electromagnetic. It's Bashar's term. Electro 
magnetic etheric, so electromagnetic energy. So you can feel it, and this way you connect your other dimensional to the environment and surroundings. So that's my take. Okay. Uh, there is a yeah. huge... Wow. That's right. strong energy, Max. Brother Max. Max. That's a very strong energy you're working with. Thank you. Thank you for the gift. Sabrina, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I actually had a, a conversation with the tree once. Yes. <laughs> um, but but yeah, when you use all your senses, when you're in nature, you know, your eyes, you smell the leaves, the, the trees, the flowers, when you touch the ground, and, and all of this grounds you because it connects you back to nature, you become aware of where you're living and why you are here. Um, and, and I think much wisdom can be gotten Right. from connecting back to, to nature and the earth and <clears throat> learning to love it again and knowing that <clears throat> she is not separate from us. Right. That's the most grounding thing is the nature, the, the connection to earth, the connection to third dimensional realities and um, bringing yourself actually it's not bringing yourself down but it is connecting to the essential base basic part of who you are exactly you're connecting to your foundation so and it's a beautiful thing and uh, then you move to the, from the basic to the sexuality and up up through the chakras but those lower chakras as they're called lower chakras are very important to third dimension. The first three are so important to uh, mm -hmm. third dimensional mm -hmm. existence. So to ex you have to really experience and understand all three of those first three chakras to to be third dimensional, you know. And then you can move up. Just don't lose track of where you were. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So that's the best way I can okay. say it. Another thing is uh, burning incense. <laughs> it is... Uh, uh, this is called uh, uh, kaifi. Can you see it? It's uh, Egyptian kaifi. It's uh, it made of raisins, uh, honey, frankincense, myrrh, and many other things. And uh, it was used, in, I think it's come from Atlantis. <coughs> it's a very ancient recipe. It was found in ancient Egyptian uh, uh, stellas, hieroglyphs, writings. And um, the tradition came alive here. They burned in the morning they burned frankincense in their churches and in the at night they burned uh, kaifi. So uh, he, this also connects um, connects uh, higher vibrations and very earthly vibrations, very earthly incense. Basically it uses uh, very natural things like frankincense is uh, sap from, from a tree. So it, it is it connects you to the trees through the vibration of the trees. It connects you to honey and raisins and myrrh, which is also a sap from the tree. So this allows you to connect things and ground yourself into into the wood. I also wanted to mention working with uh, with tools like uh, working woodworking is is so grounding and so elevating. At the same time, you you connect to that thing and also you're very creative and allows you to yeah. and the creative part is what's really connecting because those lower chakras are in charge of connecting and creating and things of that nature. And I wanted to mention it. I always preached uh, washing dishes is very grounding. Washing dishes is the best meditation that grounds you. You know, if you feel disconnected, <laughs> go wash dishes. Or if you don't have enough dirty dishes, just go wash something. Washing is very. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that makes sense because no. third-dimensional and, and a very ancient third-dimensional thing. Everybody washed from the beginning of time, so yeah, yeah. washing is wonderful. Cleansing—it's a, a cleansing thing. So cooking is very good. Yeah. <laughs> creative thing. Though. I avoid that one though, Max, as much yeah. as I can. But it's creative, <laughs> and it's very creative, and. Um, it gratifies other people. It's really good. So, it's giving. Yes, and and children are also very grounding. Yes. 
<laughs> yes. Children are very grounding, yes. Yeah, sometimes just too grounding. <laughs> <laughs> and also dogs and cats. And stuff. Oh, yes, animals, pets, very, very well. Bring, bring your dog there. Bring your dog to the colonies. No, I mean Max <laughs> dog. Oh, here? Okay. Yeah. Also, Jim and I, we go to Reiki share. And when you do healing, I mean, yesterday we were there, it's just so healing to ourselves. I did a little bit, I did a lot of healing on others, and I felt healed just by yes. healing others. Serving. Yes, the energy comes through you when you do Reiki, and you get a healing as well. So it's... It's really good. And you just come to the room, you put your hands on the head of anyone, like that, and you feel the energy flow through the hands. It just connects you to other people. And, it, and you become one with other people in many ways. And they always, people that never had Reiki before were there at the YMCA yesterday. Yeah. And they were going, hey, I'm coming back. Was it at Maplewood? Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw it. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm coming back because that was really. I don't know what you did, but it felt really great, and I'm going to, I want to I want to do that again, so. Yeah, so we have wonderful people who organize things for, on, in public places. It's like in uh, medical places, in uh, cultural centers, and now in uh, sports center, YMC. Every month we, we come there, and uh, some, someone organizes, Gary organizes it, and a lot of new people come you know. and learn it. <laughs> yeah. And and there there is one thing which uh, is very grounding is uh, massage of the foot feet, feet, foot massage, and uh, I do that. Jim does it, and uh, there are other people who do that. It's just uh, that's what Jesus Christ did, right? He washed your feet, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and she it, she washed his. So. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very uh, physical way of uh, spiritual communication. How about that? It it symbolizes that you're a servant. And that you that you were you were serving them by cleaning their feet there, by but the thing about washing the, the feet and doing the feet at the uh, Reiki thing it makes everybody feel so good. When he, I don't, there's few there's a few people out there that don't like their feet rubbed, but most of the people love their feet rubbed, and it puts them in a different state of mind. It puts them in a very positive place. It's also hitting all those reflexology points on the bottom of the feet. It's making the whole body feel good, and it just feels terrific. I, I moan and groan. Uh, if if you weren't <laughs> if there was no visual, you would think something else is going on. But um, because I'm like, oh, that's so good. Oh. But anyway, um, <laughs> once Lakesh was there, Lakesh came into Jim's body. So Lakesh got a foot massage. And? <laughs> what did Lakesh say? Oh, he loved it. In fact, he tried to come back every time I had a foot massage, but I didn't. I said, no, you just can't do that every time. Just can't. <laughs> I want to enjoy it, too. <laughs> yeah, really. So. Oh, did you, did you get one? Oh, you visited, but yeah. I'll be fair. next time. Yes. When we visit you. <laughs> yes, when you both come over. That'd be cool. We, she's having a get together for you, Colo people, uh, at her house next year. So people from all over the world are going to be coming to her house. Wow! Hope it's a big house. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you bet. She said yes. She said we'll put up tents and it'll be like a, <clears throat> a campground there. No, there's enough rooms. Okay. Enough so. rooms. How many rooms do you have? For me and dogs. No, no. I'm traveling with my, my family. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll find a campground nearby. Yeah. So it's a very cool thing. Um, I, I'm looking forward to that. Actually, there is a big shed. <laughs> oh, yes. Sleep right. with the tools. Yes. There's, there's a huge shed. I know. I mean, big. <laughs> All right, we'll discuss that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, well. All right, I think we should wrap it up. Right, on Monday, we have a um, get-together in the same place, uh, 10 a.m., same time, uh, with... Um, Jamie and Misty. Yeah. Physically present ladies, yes. Yeah. We, we were with them in the past, in the past and uh, they ask wonderful questions. It's a pleasure to answer their questions. 
And also Ma really Max, most people don't know what that's about. Can you talk a little bit about it? Oh, oh I already ahead. said that. Uh, nice, physically present ladies. But what is it about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever questions they ask. It's like an interview. They, they ask us questions. Okay, so it's an interview. They are uh, part of the Saint. How do you say that word? Saint Sunk uh, Journal. They have a, their own. Um, oh, Saint Shoot. Saint Shoot. Shoot. Yes, they are journalists. So, and they're starting an online magazine, and we will be featured in their first uh, magazine. So, they're all. Okay. So okay. And they're very educated, loving, and wonderful, and um, you'll like them a lot. I've, you've seen Jamie before. Yeah, we have video of that. Ja Jamie's been on before. Okay. And anybody, you're welcome. Uh -oh. Monday, too. It's we'll okay. Yeah. Okay. Any, any visitors are allowed. We allow them. Mikhail, Hello. speak about Ukraine. Yeah, the, the name is Zenzuk. <laughs> Zenzuk, yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I can never pronounce it right. Zandrushek is there. I think he wants to say hi. Yes, uh, I wanted to agree to you, and uh, I still have a question on my mind from what I was listening to. Uh, how uh, I cannot imagine uh, how could you perceive uh, anything, you know, change uh, in. 3D. What is what is 3D? Because for me, you know, there are three dimensions of space, but if they're not moving, I'm not moving. <laughs> so well, not. yeah, you can be in fourth dimension all the time when you're by yourself. Um, the most important thing is being. You have to be in third dimension when you're with when you're with the others, so they can understand what you're talking about. Because a lot of times, fourth dimension takes away your your third dimensional communication skills. Does that make sense to you? It's like you're communicating on a whole different level up here than you are down here. But you have to connect them and that's what the grounding does. It connects both of those so that you can speak from fourth dimension to third dimension and they can understand you because there's messages that we need from fourth dimension. But if you speak to the us in fourth dimensional talk, we won't understand them because we're third dimensional, a lot of us. All right. uh, let me clear it up. It's, so just uh, the definitions are different. Uh, so, yes, it makes sense if you know the definition. So the definitions are, what Franz Schubert speaks about is measurement dimensions. When we can measure uh, three axes, right, left, back, forward, uh, up and down, and time. It has four measurement dimensions. And it has very little to do with dimension in a different way, which is reality. So third dimension as reality has nothing to do with three measurement dimensions in time. So we have four measurement dimensions, OK? And it is yes, one. So tell me, how, how can I imagine three-dimensional reality? Because uh, I, uh, I can Not three-dimensional in measurements. It's just the name. Third dimension is our dimension. They just count it. Because they call it four dimension and our dimension third, and it has it has uh, very little to do with measurement. It just so one word is uh, measurement dimension, another word is reality dimension, and these are two different things not related to each other yes, at all. But it still does not mean anything to me, you know, reality dimension. What is it? You oh, know, reality. Where? How can I in, how yes. can I imagine one one dimension of reality or two dimensions of reality or oh, three? No. Explain to me, please, on the yes, simple. Yes, yes. <laughs> you cannot simple imagine way. one dimension reality and two dimension reality, but you can imagine their world and our world are different. So our world is where we are here, and we cannot penetrate the veil there, not easily can penetrate the veil, veil there. They kind of walk in a different parallel reality where they have little different laws of physics. And you know, these aliens, Pleiadians, and so on, they are there. And we are here. And they just call us number three and them number four. Or some of them call us number three and them number five. And some of them call us number four and them number six. It's different numbers which don't count anything. It just it just uh, just a just a name. It's it's not 
counts yeah. in a certain way. We are number third dimension. Or well, it's still, dimension. It's still yeah, legal that doesn't make sense to me at all. <laughs> Say again? It still, it's it's still labeled then uh, three-dimensional yes, reality. Yes, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me at uh, all. It just doesn't uh, mean anything to me. It's yeah, it's just a label of a different kind of a, an existence. Third-dimensional existence exists in three D, and we experience it without the fourth-dimensional. But when you bring the fourth dimension into it, how? it changes how you see the third dimension as well. So that yeah, well, yeah. I'll stop you right there because you said we experience we uh, experience three dimensions without four dimension. So how do you do that? How do you experience three dimensions without time, without perception, you, without change, you, without continuity? You know. No, no. Third you, dimension. You need to have time as a fourth dimension to perceive something. You know. Right. Exactly. So, Third dimension reality contains time and three measurement dimensions. Yeah, it, it just, just contains all those things. Poor naming. I mean, word dimension confused. Yeah. In Russian, this would be two different words, and you wouldn't be confused. It's just English confuses the things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's English. <laughs> that's English. Uh, yeah, third dimension has all those Lots things. Lots of meanings. Yeah, <laughs> has all those things in it. It has time. It has uh, conversation. It has everything that you mentioned in there is in the third dimension. But in the fourth dimension, it changes a little because you're getting different information there. Does that make sense? Let's call, okay. third, dim let's call third dimension our but, reality and fourth dimension alien. But, and then everything is fixed. I mean, if you don't use the word dimension, use just reality, then, then it becomes very clear. Our reality, alien reality. So when we're talking about bringing alien reality here, then miracles happen. You get telepathy, psychic abilities, energy, healing, and all of that. So you don't have to use the world dimension at all. The dimension confuses. It just. What, but the way I perceive it, you know, te telepathy and all of that you mentioned exist existed in the reality I was born to, even before I was born to it. You know. Correct. So you basically were born into alien reality and live here barely, and. Um, some of us are more like from this reality, and they are. For us, it's. Uh, what is your reality then? I don't understand it. You know, I oh. don't. I don't get. You know, what do, what do I see? What do you not see then? If you say this. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's seeing third dimension. You you're third dimensional in the sense that you you know what third dimension's about. It has uh, physicality. It has sexuality. It has nature. It has love. Those are all things in the third dim dimension that also exist in the fourth dimension, except it's in a different density. So that's all. All right, let, let, let me explain another way. So mainstream materialistic world refuses anything supernatural. They say there is only life here, no life after death. Uh, there is no mystic, no, no miracles, no energy. Everything is measured by physics. And it is electromagnetic, it is materialistic, it is something that you can touch. If you can attach it, it doesn't exist. That's uh, uh, very, this reality, materialistic thinking, which you can, which is also called, quote-unquote, third-dimensional. It has nothing to do with measurement. Newton uh, physics, but uh, over more than 15 ye 50 years, we believe that uh, E equals MC squared, which means that everything is energy. Yeah, yeah. So yes. that, that's uh, what was before that. Before that, it's like beginning of 20th century. That's the main idea of yes. of third dimensional thinking. Yes. Everything is energy. If you break any molecule in any person, place, thing, stone, wall, there's energy inside of it. We are a light has formed a matter around energy. Uh, every molecule has energy in it. Every single molecule. So we are all made of energy. Everything's made of energy. Everything. Frantishak? Yeah. Um, for me, the, what distinguishes third dimension from fourth dimension is that in fourth dimension, I mean third dimension, we have the linear time and we have time. In fourth dimension time, it's a little bit more pliable. It's, it, you can play with it more. Now, if you were born doing that, playing with time and able to do that, um, 
you you started at a different spot. Didn't we all do, do that in our imagination? Imagining to be someone else, somewhere else, uh, in some other time. We yeah, did that as kids, right? We but did that as kids, but the problem is that we're all told that that's just your, simply your imagination and to discount all of that. Do you see the difference? So people created this, um, if you want to call it artificial wall, within yeah. their reality. So, so it, what you're saying is that you are not born to this, what you call 3D, we were taught to be in 3D. That's a simple, um, that's a simple, um, relatable explanation for yourself. Sort right, of, Chef, yeah, because right you you are shifting. Obviously, you are changing from here to there, but we're not aware of it. So, so there's that veil there that it's that it's put in front of you, and and it limits you. So, so the more it limits you, the more you get. You're not flexible with with time. With 4D, it's more pliable. Um, may I speak? <coughs> sure. So, um, one second. I, we have to go though. You oh, okay. Can continue to your conversation, but we, I have to leave. I have something coming up, and uh, Francine has to leave as well. Mm. So, um, oh. so continue your conversation. I wish I would, could stay for it all, but I can't. So Namaste, have a great day. So well, have you. a great day, Jim. Namaste. So Bye, much. Jim. Bye. Nice meeting, everyone. Nice. Bye. Bye. Bye, 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 Francine. Bye. Uh, we very much appreciated you coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Well, Thank Mary, you leaving as well? You. I'll stay. If you oh, like. Okay. So Sarah, you were saying? Yes, I, I was thinking about this idea that Sabrina put forth and that you put forth as well, Crafty Shack. Um, this idea of the veil or limitations that had been given to us even though we were born in a different mindset. And you are both right. <laughs> this yeah. idea of the 3D exactly. world um, that has been handed to us uh, it makes it seem real and yet it is unreal as you say because we were born in a scope and in ideas that we are so much more for and we knew it as children we knew it and, mm -hmm. and, and the adults were like oh this doesn't exist but we still knew the truth this is why we're here we understand yeah. that it's all just pure energy yeah. We wow. understand that it has nothing to do with this dimension or that dimension. We can move up if we decide that that's exactly what we want. Um, those, those dimensional qualities have been given to us as stepping stones, really. But Good. if they exist for us, and they exist, and if they don't exist for us, hey, <laughs> we can automatically just start playing with time. So, <laughs> I think right. uh, Francis, uh, like all of us, you know, you are born into 3D reality, but you have chosen to um, focus and put more uh, attention to your 4D reality. There's That's nothing wrong obvious. with that. No, no. Is he saying there that is nothing the wrong with that. We all, we all do that. So what he's saying is the, three, the idea of the levels of 3D, 4D, 5D, they don't actually exist. That's what he's saying. Yeah. But as yeah, long as you are right. in physical body, you yes, are. and your physical body is 4D. It has three dimensions of space, one dimension of time. So what er, what else it could be 3D, you know, density. So uh, let's say your your body is uh, dense as a third density, and then you see it, you know, then you can touch it. And if it's if it's even denser, 
then then what you know you can touch it as well you know what's what's the difference i didn't i didn't ever experience any change in that you know so i'm not i'm not switching from one uh, reality to to another in in a sense of dimensions or or densities you know i'm just becoming more aware of of what i've always been you know within my imagination mm -hmm. Does it make see, sense? He, the step, he doesn't need the stepping stones is what he's saying. He's understanding himself as just pure energy. And energy moves and flows without any limitations. Yeah, that's that's not what I'm saying, but that's true as well. What I mean is, is that uh, we just uh, put labels around everything. But if you are explaining this to a three-year-old kid, wouldn't understand at all what you mean, you know. So, mm -hmm. w what you can say him uh, is, is you know, you can experience this, that, and that, and uh, it's all just uh, another different experiences, you know. There's no, there's no dimensions or or densities in it, you know, for for us, you know. <laughs> we just label something that someone that everyone else imagines. And if there's something else under, you know, we we use terms that that don't mean to different people different things, you know, and and then how can we, you know, <laughs> unite in in our thinking when when we just, uh, you know, uh, uh, put out terms that some agree with, some says some says, but you were. Uh, this worked like that before, and uh, this must work like this before. But for whom, you know? There exactly. were always people that were different, you know. Always, all the times. I would say that people understand each other pretty well. I guess when we meet together and we discuss things, we develop common terms and we understand things pretty, pretty similarly. Yeah, you know, I grew up in a Christian uh, gr groups, different churches, and uh, we call this call the language that we use uh, Christian. Let's check check word. You know, like it's it's not a, a real language. It's artificial. It it works just in a closed group, but uh -huh. it uh, it does not mean anything to to others. You know, so why why to use it? Uh, I guess it is uh, communication is a very important experience for uh, for us. It's uh, it's that's why the the most the main reason for us to be here to, to communicate. Yeah, so why don't we use terms that make sense to everyone? Uh, I guess it is a choice. Uh, you know, I, I'm worried more about standardization. Everybody is so standard standardized that there is no individuality. So I. I'm worried about worry more about uh, being people being brainwashed than people being different. I actually, like no, no, no. Uh, think uh, That's what I mean. You know, I mean, uh, I mean uh, unifying in the sense to have understanding what we mean by words. You know, that's that's the only thing. You know, there unify because then you know I I can uh, I was channeling uh, today in Czech. And there was a Christian uh, guy, and he he thought we were death worshippers, and he based based that uh, his his assumptions on what I I don't know what you know, but he because that was mentioned in in the channeling, he automatically thought you know death worshippers. <laughs> that that's that's uh, misleading you know, like yeah. uh, we are. Uh, we don't pay attention to what we say, what, what we speak about. We just say it because we are thought, uh, l learned to do it that way. But uh, outside, it it can, you know, but we uh, unconsciously know that that it causes different reactions, different emotions, different mm -hmm. connections. Yeah, and it also causes separation. Yeah, but the thing is, at the end of the day, even when you have the same definition, you're still not going to view it the same. So, if if we agree that apples are are red, 
right? We can all agree to that before we start a conversation and then we move on from there. But yeah. even there, we're still going to see the apple differently. Yeah. So, well, so at the end of the yeah, day, we will have the, our own perspective on on what it is that we're seeing. Yeah. Well, Sabrina, in your instance, to to uh, agree, you know, how, uh, right. what is the color of apples? Right. And, uh, yeah, and we didn't uh, didn't get agreement. We just said, you know, it's a term that me that uh, means, you know, this and this and this for someone. But uh, it, it I cannot imagine anything underneath under it under those different experiences. Sabrina, using uh, your same analogy about the apples, there's one group who may agree that the apples are red, and then another group says. They're red and green and right. yellow. Right. Because so, or or they have only seen green apples. And exactly. They, and they say it's wrong. green. You are wrong. <laughs> yeah. They'll tell you you are wrong. Exactly. I have only seen green apples. So right. This. But then you have the third person who says they're red, they're green, they're yellow, and right. they are all right. Right. That's why I said it's a perspective. It's it's all on how you have seen and what you have been exposed to and how you have viewed life from the very beginning. Exactly. And but how you have been conditioned within that life. Right. So this is what I'm getting is we are born, we have certain ideas, we come with those ideas that we are all. And then we are taught certain limitations <laughs> and then we have to put labels on those limitations to say this is this and that is that. Well, mm -hmm. when you say this is 3D, this is 4D, when you look at it in that perspective, you also have the idea of separating yourselves from the others who have a different mindset. And so if you understand that we were actually we, we are actually brought here being all of these things because we are energy and those limitation has been set on us when you put the label you say yes that limitation exists yeah and it just may not exist it's just a thought it's a limitation put you know given to us so we can understand an idea but um, in truth, it just may may just be a label. It's just a label. <laughs> but that label causes separation from those who are who consider themselves in the 4D atmosphere, a range of uh, knowledge and ideas and circumstances, to those who are 3D or considered 3D, um, and those ideas, knowledge, and circumstances. So. We need to find a balance and understanding that we are all one instead of separating ourselves. Okay, those people are 3D and we are 4D. Yeah. There is no separation. Yeah, yeah but if, if, if the other person has been living always within um, the 3D mindset, you can't go to them and try to explain all of these 4D thoughts and ideas because they're not going, not even want to go with you there. So I understand that right, right now, right now, we are, we are like, it's for us, it's actually a special situation because we are 3D, 4D because we have to merge these two ideas together. Do you see what I'm saying? So that so that we explain what 4D is to 3D people, but we also got to stick. We have to stay connected with both sides or both ideas. However you wish to look at it, you know that is that is that is your perspective. But the the uh, the connection or or the bridging has to be uh, created. Uh, there, otherwise we won't be able to reach others. And you are right with the connection in the bridge. Um, it's necessary, but for those who have 
move beyond the label, the label itself, the 3D world, the 4D world, the 5D world. Those labels are no longer necessary for those entities or beings. And so um, it, it's just another stepping stone. That's all. Everyone is right. Yeah. I cannot imagine though what is the 3D mindset. You know, I have I have uh, guys from streets here. Uh, here is <laughs> here is one. His name is oh, Raja. No. He's uh, 60. And uh, uh, would you say he's uh, he's 3D or he, uh, he has 3D mindset? What? How would you uh, How would you judge that? You know. How would you say who is 3D and who is 4D? I see him as simple love existence, choosing to exist in this fabric of space with the rest of us. In this and this is how he's choosing to express himself through ourselves, through himself. It's kind of simple. Yes, all is love. All this energy. Just different. Ex just dip like if we were all just honest, what we wanted to do. Yeah. Then we simple, could do simple guy, you know. But uh, <laughs> there's no difference between us, you know. We are. We're all uh, looking for yeah, love. Yeah, we're with, different born places, into totally morning. different times, but uh, we experience. We we share share similar experiences, you know. Yes. People just don't talk about it, but we, all of us experience it, you know. Even our grandmoms and granddaddies. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for this impartation. It's very expanding. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So are we ready to go Hi. offline? Oh, Justin, go ahead. Or um, Hi, Nitrous. I finally got in. Yay! <laughs> I asked you questions for you, so watch the webinar, okay? Okay. Hopefully my internet won't disconnect on me. Mm hmm Okay. Very good. Um, do we wish to go off live now? Everyone? It's Max who has to do it if he's online or not. Yes, I know. Yeah. We, we have to tell Max. Well, he's, he's just letting us talk, so... Let's not worry about it. <laughs> he <laughs> just going to make some meditation yeah. or stuff. Mm. Anyone has anything else to say? Or should we start a new hangout so we can go offline? Well, I have a question for all of you. Um, mm -hmm. throughout, your life, throughout your lifetimes, um, have you ever noticed things working out in your life unexpectedly? Yes. <laughs> Definitely. It happens all the time. Yeah, exactly. After, re after realizing that you create your reality. Yes. One. And before. <laughs> yes. Do you have anything else to add to the question, Pegasus? No. Oh, okay. Anyone else? No. No. Okay, should yeah, we close this one? Yeah, it can be. 
I had an idea with 3D and 4D that it can be just the other way around than we say it, you know, because 4D is four dimensions of, you know, uh, with time. Mm -hmm. But what we are stopping to perceive is time, you know. We are, you know, we see every moment here. So we're becoming more and more 3D in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, idea, the idea is, is like, Maybe maybe source is tired of being source. It's like, hey, whoever's willing to trade up, you know, the emotion. I don't think source is tired of being source though. Just well, well, we well my source is tired of keeping track of my ass and keeping me, my ass safe. You know, yeah, go go sure. set up, go, go go back up and because sit in the crystal, this would and and and, well. and I'll come enjoy Earth the way you, I've told you to, and I'll make it happen for us. Wait so a minute, Justin, doing. Justin, Source loves us no matter what we do. Exactly. <laughs> Aren't we all remnants of Source? Yes, we are. We are all this is what my source. source. And this is what my Source is calling for in this moment, and it's working out beautifully. It mm -hmm. really is. It doesn't look like it, but I'm getting comfortable with it because it's like this is how Source wants to live. If this is how Source wants to live, like... I've been comfortable with it for a while, so just bring what needs to happen, happen, so I can expand upon this, because I know this isn't it. I know this is the beginning now. I truly understand that since I got to the point that I've gotten to, it's just going to be the beginning, and just expand from there. Mm -hmm. And here comes the blue ray, and so oh, many... <laughs> we have an infinite being in 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 this collective co-created moment. Yes. This moment is a part of the infinite being. Does anyone want to be an infinite? We and are all infinite. <laughs> Exactly, but who would love to stay in this body for, not forever, but for a while to enjoy what their life truly is and simply is? I would love to just do keep on doing what I'm doing. However, it's not working in the fact where, you know, I've <clears throat> it's, weighing on my, it's weighing on my mind and stuff that, you know, others have been assisting me and I haven't been able to support and the energy known as money. And I have everything else to offer, but it's not necessarily being, it's, it's being received, but I just know that if it was received with this... Hey, it was this, this new guy, Brother Luxo, Luxor Bear. Yes. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Bear. So, Brother Bear. Oh, he might be getting his headset on or something, or away from his laptop or computer. Um, Justin, are you talking about a walk-in? A walk-in. Yes, we're basically souls uh, trade uh, trade places. Like, say, like your soul exits your body, and, and another soul goes in your body and experiences what you experience. Is that what you were talking about? Um, I'm getting the answer of. What simply would be yes to to make it relatable for you. However, I've chosen my purest fractal of source and whatever idea that means to be, and whatever it builds to be, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Now that I'm comfortable with just being one simple 
fractal of being that is understanding. I understand that I'm an individual. However, I'm an individual that's made up of collect a collective idea of what this individual is to be. And this, and I'm understanding the way I live my life is, co is comfortable and beneficial to the collective. However it is, it is. My existence I'm understanding is, is assisting the transition, the shift, whatever I'm doing <laughs> in the simplest ways. And I have no issues being honest. It's just some people's boundaries might be like, wow, how is it that, you know, it's just, there's just new ways to finding your idea of, of your higher power, your higher source, what, what gives you strength when you need you know, God-like strengths, if you will, you know, when you, when you feel like you need to, you know, break a boundary, but, you know, it's like, man, you, you've been told your whole life you can't, well, what are going to be the consequences of that action? Okay, if I do it out of this, if I do it with this intent, well, if we finally get in the alignment of just living from the heart and just, I'm almost to the point of just ready to just talk in expressions of just pure love, just, how are you? I'm love. How was your day? Loving. How was your moment? Fucking loving and amazing. You know, no matter what, I'm getting to a point that no matter what goes on around me, it just automatically just gets pulled up in and and charged into white light, and wherever it came from, it goes it goes back to, and it goes back as pure love. But we Since, oh, that's all I see. Um, Max, to, if someone could call Max to get the call off. There. Oh, like ask, ask Max to take it off, off live air? Yeah. I'll hit him up on Skype real quick. Mm -hmm. I got him. Hello there. Yeah. Brother Bear, my blue star cancer, the love cancer. Where you at? Hmm. What if we change the name of cancer to love? <laughs> seriously, like seriously, simply, what if Everyone just started, what if we all just got to the idea of like, if, if someone says it like, oh, you're talking about love. Oh, yeah, that person's dying of love right now. I don't know whoever, whoever they're giving it to. They're giving a lot of themselves to it, but, you know. You should change it to infinite love. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because that's what I'm feeling. I'm literally feeling I had things attached to that I gave these experiences just out of pure love and return for love and understanding and I received the healing. Mm -hmm. So I give up the feelings, those, especially the ones that are uncomfortable, you know, because sometimes expansion can be painful. It can, but we all have our different ways of, um, making the expansion a little more comfortable and and it's just find our it's just find our own ways to, you know, get comfortable with it. And then after getting comfortable, you're just like, all right, I really do I need this tool anymore? Yes or no? Is it beneficial to me? Is it is it affecting my outside universe? And my simple truths are like at times, yes, it does. At this moment, it's it's not, you know. And that feels way better than, you know, the other feelings did. And now I'm at a point where I've completely shifted where, you know, I don't look at time. I don't look at, like, directions. I, You know, I just do what I can to keep simply keep my, what I understand what my balance is. You know what my t so I can keep my directionality and my path, and it's it doesn't look like it 
to a lot of the perceivable universe, you know, but when the people that haven't seen me, you know, that are just like, wow, you just popped out of nowhere and you look like just everyone, you look different. And one of the things I've been getting for the last like two or three years is this like, man, when did you look, when did you turn into Jesus Christ? When did you look, when did you start looking like Jesus? Like, like this started happening about like three years ago. And it's just been really interesting the places that like this has come up. And, and it's really funny because it's like I, I found my, my individual higher power while just sitting in a forced vacation, if you will, um, because of what my choices were. And it was in this in the moment I was like, wow, wow, it just all hit me, you know, like another awakening, another epiphany. It's just like, and then I found a book on Buddhism, and I found a book on Taoism, I found a book on on um, the Four Agreements, and they all just manifested to me in this place. And then there is another book that says you, um, hold on, I just need to get up for a second. No, I'm back, Sarah. So hello, Sarah. Okay, Sarah. You can heal your life. I feel like someone else is here with you today. <laughs> is that your wish? It feels like it's kind of Naga. What's that? You speak a little bit different than he normally does. Mm. You go, mm, and that's usually what Naga does. <laughs> so. I do that sometimes as well. Yeah, I never hear you do it, I only hear Naga do it. <laughs> yeah. And you said, I do it as well. That means that you are Naga now, right? I've always been Naga. <laughs> um, I'm getting a... Pegasus? Uh, you're getting a what, Pegasus? Uh, I was saying that I'm getting a feeling if you look like traveling through the universe and passing by different planets as, as I'm oh. staring out my window and looking out the sky. How does this make you feel? Cool. It's sort of expanding. Would you be up into well? That's awesome, dude. Into your heart? I look yes. out my window and the night is coming. <laughs> the clouds look very cool. Mm hmm. When you say the night is coming, uh, Gabriel, do you mean, because um, I know where you are, it's like a number of days of night, and then a number of days of day. So is it that at the moment? Would night be coming for many days? You see, it's almost completely dark, but it's still light. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of clouds. Well, there is always like light. The night is coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, but will it be night for like a month or so where you are? It would be many months. Many months, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Sean Winter. Is That's coming. why I want to get to Hawaii <laughs> as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. But should we move to another hangout? So yeah, maybe that would be the best bet. I yeah, this recording will be crap because it's so. Should uh, sh here, I'll just I'll just throw out an invite on Hukula one chat. And should I create the hangout or whoever gets to it first? Um, could you guys be sure to send me the link in Google Plus? Yes. 
I, I'm right. working. I, I will call you, Sarah. Then we can. I will send the link. All right. Goodbye, everybody on Hukulu TV. We will see you next week. Love you, smooches. <laughs>